Hiya. Uh, Hi. Have you looked at over version of it? Yes, I have. How many have you been there? Three. Three of you. I think at the moment the best table for you be in the corner there. Uh, it's cosy, yes, it's cold out there, so pop yourself down there and uh, I'll be looking at a couple of moments. Okay. Hi, I'm Bronick Kaminsky and I run this restaurant which is uh, Bronick's International Fish Cuisine. The name Bronick, which is a shortened name for Bronislau, which is a, a Polish background, I'm, I have a restaurant, a fish restaurant, a solely fish restaurant, in Northfields Avenue in Ealing, uh, which is in West London. Okay, well, uh, I've been here uh, six to seven years. I worked by the, by the coast, uh, Devon and Cornwall, for quite a few years. So the sea has been a very, very big part of my life. Uh, I, know, I know the seas, I know my tides, and I know my seasons. And this is something which I brought back to London with me. The sea is a very, very close thing to my heart. I've got a great respect for it and, 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 and the contents therein. Uh, this restaurant, to be a purely fish and seafood restaurant. I do not use any alcohol in food, and that's what I'm bringing to you guys, all, all my customers, uh, to share that experience with you. So what is this? Uh, pearl spot. That's a pearl spot, yep. uh, and that's a tomato group. That's an okra sauce. It's made with um, uh, peppers, okra, occasional spices. So it's it's got a bit of oomph to it. That's a, that is a smoky paprika sauce, which goes well with mussels. People used to the moulmane, yeah, with the white wine and the garlic and parsley. Uh, as French, and I believe to me, boring. We want to complement the mussels, which are wonderful um, Norfolk mussels. I really want to bring them out with some nice flavours with them without killing the flavour, uh, but accentuating it. I always like to fillet fish at the last moment because by the time you handle them, the heat from your hands does actually make an effect. So I like to do it at the last moment. Yes, it's un but one back part of that is that you have to wait sometimes for a meal, but it's at least you know it's been freshly produced, freshly prepared, and it's not been lying about in the back of the fridge filleted and hopefully waiting for some, someone to, to come along and eat it. It's all done to order. Also, I like to um, fillet my own fish without the fishmonger touching anything because I've got a bonus of having all the bones for the stocks for my soups and my sauces. How much of your fish is fresh, as in alive? Uh, well, my a lot of my the lobsters, crabs come in live. Um, fish, unfortunately, I can't have. I don't have the, the facilities here to keep live fish. I have a delivery every single day, uh, sometimes on Sunday, it all depends what boats are working, so I, I get some fish directly from the coast, from Norfolk, um, and from Cornwall as well, so whatever's being landed, I'm getting the, either that night or, or the very next day. Right, mussels. 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 I normally put calamari and prawns, uh, garlic prawns, garlic calamari, garlic prawns. Also then I'll put prawns, peeled prawns into a, almost like a curry situation and we've got a smoky pepper sauce to go with the, um, with the mussels. Uh, on, with that we're going to be a couple of grilled fish which I think I'm going to barbecue a piece of cod and I'm going to grill a sea bass. The 
That's quite a wow factor with a dish like this. Right. Look at those gorgeous, gorgeous flakes of fish. Right, here we go. There's some potato. As the smoked haddock is very, very salty. The process of smoking needs uh, a lot of salt to start off with to draw some of the water out. Because if you smoke fish, which has got all its water in it, it'll, it'll fall apart. This way it's a firm piece of fish, um, and this one's not dyed, it's not, there's no chemicals added, just salt and smoke. The healthier yeah, they are, yeah. the healthier the harder they are to open. And these come in every day as well. I've got quite a section of oysters normally. I've just got these at the moment. But I have oysters here which can be up to two kilograms in weight. Which is a bit of a bit of a weight. But they are fabulous Danish oysters. But they're not available all the time. These are lovely and fresh and oh. Just the taste of the sea. I cook my, all my chips, we do a lot of fish and chips. I cook them completely separately, fish to chips. Simply because if uh, I can offer a gluten-free fish, I will fry it in the, uh, the fryer where I've never had any flour product whatsoever. Quite well known for my big scallops. Always fresh, uh, but either Cornish or Scottish. I should know um, the, the, the grounds where they're collected in Cornwall. I've been in Scotland where they're actually, these, are ha these are actually dived on. A barbecue is extremely useful because it, it, it's dry heat, it will remove any excess moisture that you don't need and it adds a lot of flavour to the fish as well. Sometimes fish needs a little bit of extra and its oils as it drips onto the charcoals will actually flavour it back again. A classic combination, a very Singapore style lemongrass, uh, ginger, uh, chili, uh, a, a red chili, a mild chili, and, and a hot chili, and a bit of tamarind which I've already pureed. So that starts frying and releasing all its larvae flavour. And next will be our lobster. It's a nice and healthy one. So there's a little. That's it, he's dead. Okay. I don't think we'll be eating those. Otherwise, it, all the customers will say that the lobster is rubbery. Uh, the corn flour seals the fish and thickens the sauce. 
without adding any wheat flour. So even if someone's gluten free. And this is their brains you're taking out? No, it's just, no, it's not. It's actually the stomach. The stomach is in the top part of the uh, right in the top of the head. And that, that some contains little stones and little bits of grit, so we want to rem remove that. So tell me about the flavours that you use. Well, this is all basically some far east, it's Singapore, Japan, all very, very similar. It's a similar sort of cooking, and it's stir fried simply because the firewood heating was at a premium. Cut in small pieces into a wok, um, all the ingredients go in, cook it quickly, and serve it so it's, it's not hanging about. Uh, some people actually add wine instead of, instead of just plain water, but wine will give it a, an unpleasant flavour most of the time, and it's just it's really not necessary. So where did the Asian fusion come from? The Asian fusion, or is uh, it not a fusion? Well, it, it's not a fusion. This is actually sort of almost where potatoes are indigenous to Europe. This style of cooking is over Asia. The same, same, same sort of spices, same sort of seasonings. Um, tamarind is, is, is widely used, apart from in Europe. Chilies, chilies now more so. Garlic is, 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 is worldwide. So it's just, just it's, it's a regional, it's basically what your mother cooked. Uh, the Japanese influence for me is when I used to work, wait for my girlfriend in Soho when she finished work, I used to, I used to actually, because I, I was very much involved in uh, martial arts, and I was very interested in Japan, I used to eat in a little Japanese restaurant called the Hokkaido in Brewer Street, which is no longer. And uh, because I sometimes had to wait a really long time on my own, I got talking with the staff, and before you know I finished up in the kitchen at the age, uh, <laughs> ripe old age of 17. And the, the funny thing is I remember there, they, 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 they gave me a nickname, which was, because I like my food, they actually called me a rice bucket. And I think that's stuck with me since. I've worked in many different kitchens, and uh, whether it's uh, kosher, halal, um, and many others. So I, I'm, the, I'm the person who wants, I'm not just interested in, in, in knowing uh, the, uh, the rules, I want to know the reasons behind the rules. It makes it interesting. grouper. I've got a very strange way of cooking it. They, uh, not Well, I haven't seen any, anybody else doing it. It's actually um, uh, taken off a bone. Then the bones are roasted and then the fillets are put back onto the onto the bones on the barbecue. So as the bones are burning, 
you get a wonderful flavour of beautiful, beautiful fish. Absolutely gorgeous. The wonderful flavour of the barbecue and the fish itself. This is a very brief cooking. And I was told, the customer said to me the other day that the bones, when you pick the bones up towards as you finish with the fish, it's like eating a really nice biltong. It's got that lovely smoky dry flavour. Uh, it's uh, a blend of um, chili, turmeric, again turmeric, I use a lot of turmeric, and garlic, garlic powdered. I use fresh garlic, I let it dry and use that instead of using the gran granules. So even though a, a fish might not be uh, British, it can be cooked in a British way. Or uh, in India, you can cook a fish in an English way. It's international fish cookery. Then I said you got that. I just give it a little splash of some oil. Um, that's that's a, a simple sauce of all, all my favourites: chili, uh, turmeric, lemongrass, a little, little bit of pepper, and spring onion. So it's spicy. There's no salt in there whatsoever. I try to avoid salt of, of any description. No seasoning powder, there's nothing. So you actually the, the spices, the, the chilies are shining through. You've got salt on the table if you need it. Yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. Uh, sea bass, the wild sea bass, yeah. and I'm doing it the Egyptian yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the with most of the gum friendly bones taken out. Wow. Oh. That's good. What's that, Bronny? Is that real? Yeah. Whose is it? Former customer. Distance <laughs> <laughs> food. I'm still waiting for the bill to be paid. I'm really am pleased to, uh, I was visited by Feed the Lion and can share with all, all of you, all of you, what we do here. Something which is reasonably unique, uh, exciting and custom built. So let's see if we can get you back here and enjoy some, some of your suggestions as well. Bronix, that's myself, we've teamed up with Feed the Lion and we'd like to offer a discount to introduce you uh, after you left the review. Thanks very much. Hope to see you soon. Be
Lion. 